Hi guys, welcome back aboard Athena. This week we're going to modify our solar out so we can fit four 400 watt solar panels on there for a total of 1600 watts. Unfortunately, the 400 watt sun power solar panels are about two inches or 50 millimeters longer than what the arch is built to handle, hence the need to modify it. For the last four months, I've been trying to find a stainless guy that could come here to the boat, chop the end off of the arms that support the solar panels and weld in place a 50 millimeter extension bit of square tubing. But that has proven impossible. It seems like everybody here is just too busy to want to take on a small and annoying job like this. So if I want to get this done before we leave the UK in under a month, I'm going to have to do it DIY style. Fortunately, there is a maker spot, a communal workshop right here in Gosport, and it's pretty dang spiffy. My name is Mess. This is my wife, Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. Tick welding outside in a windy marina is not great. So I've come up with a design for an adapter that allow me to do all of the welding at the workshop. This is roughly what it's gonna look like and I've got all of my materials ready. Some square tubing or box section as it's called over here, a bit of flat bar, some nuts and bolts and a bit of stainless filler rod just because I know they don't have any stainless filler rod at the workshop and some polishing stuff here so we can hopefully get this to be nice and shiny. Let's get a backpack filled with all the stuff I need and then we can head to the workshop. This will be my first real visit to the workshop so I don't know exactly what they've got there so I'm going to be bringing a bunch of my own stuff like the drills I need and some cutting oil just to make sure. Whoops I almost left without my trusty angle grinder and of course an adapter pluggy because my Danish one won't fit over here. So yeah, let's get underway. It's about a two mile walk to get to the workshop. It's north of the marina. Not that long, but long enough that you don't wanna forget anything on the boat just to come back again. The Hotworks workshop is located way in the back and it doesn't see a lot of action. I think there's only one other guy here that occasionally does stuff in here. There's a CNC plasma cutter in here, a couple of bench grinders, nice area over here for metalworking. Yeah, and a ton of different welders. Let's just dive right in and get started on my two adapter doohickeys. Before I can get to the welding, I need to get this cut down to two pieces of 200 millimeters and get a couple of holes drilled in these guys. The adapters are coming along nicely and you guys can already kind of see what they're gonna look like. The idea is that this square tubing is big enough to slide over the arms on the solar arch and then I'll weld these nuts onto here and have some bolts just go down and tighten this into a place. I figured it'd be a good idea to do a little bit of practicing because it's been a while since I've welded and I am by no stretch of the imagination a good welder as you will see but the welder here doesn't have what's called high frequency start so you have to do what's called a scratch start which is just a little bit more complicated and something I definitely needed to practice. I got too much heat put into the nut here and not enough into the square tubing but other than that I think that's a decent weld. Let's go for broke and get these nuts welded on here. This is potentially going to be very ugly. It took a little bit longer than I had hoped, but this is one solar panel adapter doohickey ready for polishing. Now I just gotta repeat the process one more time for the second one. Yeah. 
The nuts are by far the most annoying part of this doohickey when it comes to welding. The welds are not pretty, but I think they're good enough. That was the last bit of welding. Next up, grinding. This is gonna be almost at head height for me. So I wanna make sure that this is nice and round without any sharp corners. So far, so good. Both of the adapter doohickeys are now ready for, God help me, polishing. I spent just about one and a half eternities last summer polishing the solar arch. So I'm not really looking forward to this step, but it will make the doohickeys look a lot better. Out comes the disc. There is the coarse, the medium, the fine, and then of course the felt and the two polishing compounds. Just like that, two finished solar panel adapter doohickeys. They're still a little bit dirty. I need to remove the last bit of polish, but other than that, I think they turned out really well. Assuming I can get them to slide in over the existing arms once I've chopped off the ends, I'm gonna call that a big giant success. I'm gonna head back to the boat and uh, grab a shower and a change of clothes. The adapter doohickeys are gonna slide over the ends on the arms up here once I've chopped off the end, but I can't chop off the end here in the marina because I might get rust spots on our neighboring boats. This week we have back-to-back -back storms, culminating in Storm Eunice or something like that tomorrow. So taking the boat out and standing up here balancing with an angle grinder doesn't really seem like the best idea. That's okay, we can wait until next week to do that. And speaking of next week, the 400 watt sun power solar panels are going to show up on Monday, so that's very exciting. This week there is another stainless job I'd like to get started on. The drive unit for our autopilot is located here in the cockpit locker. Right now we don't have anything to prevent stuff from sliding in between the drive unit and the boat, potentially locking the rudder in place. I want to build some kind of frame or cowling around the drive unit to protect it. That also means that we can start using the cockpit locker for storing stuff in again. So uh, let's Let's head to the workshop. I'm not entirely sure this thing is actually gonna fit in through the hatch. So I figured it's a good idea to just give that a test before we start polishing it. Bam, that is a nice snug fit. It varies quite a bit how busy it is in here. I'm the only one that's here this morning. So why don't I hurry up and give you guys a quick little tour. Once you're a member, you get a little fob that gives you access to the workshop. There are two layers to this workshop. Why don't we start here on the ground floor? Right next to the entrance, there are a couple of toilets and then there is the kitchen. There is a coffee maker, vending machine, fridge and freezer, stove, oven, stuff like that. I'm not really gonna be spending much time in here. Now we get to the real workshoppy areas. So over here, there's a bunch of boxes. I believe each member can have a box there just to keep your things in. Over here, there is a bunch of bays that you can rent so you have your own private little area. General purpose workshop. There's a painting area in here, just a general workshop. Over here in the corner, there is a lathe for metal stuff and there is a mill, although I don't believe the mill is actually hooked up right now. From there, we get into the woodworking workshop where the fun really begins. There is a bunch of cool machines in here. There's a giant CNC machine here that can take a full sheet of plywood. It's taken apart right now because they're busy doing some upgrades to it. Immediately behind the giant CNC, there is a small room with a couple of woodworking lathes. There's a bunch of just normal hand tools here, both with battery and cordless, table saw, band saw, router table, just 
everything you could want in a woodworking workshop. The Hotworks workshop, where I've been spending most of my time, is hidden here in the back of the woodworking area, and that about covers the ground floor. Now let's head upstairs because there's some cool stuff up there too. There's two ways of getting there. There's a staircase here in the back of the woodworking area, and there's one near the kitchen. Coming up the stairs from the woodworking area, we get into the lounge slash classroom area. There's a bunch of tables up here, some couches, a big screen, and what looks like some kind of gaming peripherals. This is a really nice space and up here you can look out over the first floor. Down there is where we started the tour of the workshop. The entrance to the kitchen is way back there. Next to the lounge slash classroom area is the fabrication lab. In here there's stuff like this thermoforming doohickey which I am in no way familiar with. There's also this laser cutter which I believe is one of the most popular machines here. There's a total of four 3D printers in here. One of them being a resin printer. It looks like the resin printer has been printing something overnight, something that took 10 hours and 25 minutes. And I can see it hanging in there. That's kind of cool. The other three 3D printers are more traditional FDM printers. From the fabrication lab, we step into the electronics area. Here you've got everything you need to tinker with electronics, power supplies and soldering guns, an interesting pile of potentially working items, and just a bunch of different components up here, anything your heart could desire. The last room left on the second floor is the media suite. In here is a bunch of computers with different software on them, software for video editing, audio stuff, programming, whatever you want. This place is nothing short of amazing. Now sadly our time here in Gosport is coming to an end because our visas are expiring, but if we could have stayed long I would have loved to play with the laser cutter, the 3D printers, and that giant CNC down in the woodworking workshop. If you like making things, I don't think I have to tell you how amazing this space is. If you're a member here, you'd get to play with machines that you'd most likely never get access to if it wasn't for this place. Like for instance the giant CNC here behind me, plus another one of the upsides to becoming a member in a place like this is that there'll be somebody there to teach you how to use said machine. So wherever you are in the world, I highly recommend you check out to see if there is a maker's spot somewhere close to you. And if you're in the Gosport area, well then I highly, highly recommend that you come here and check it out. I'll include a link for their website down in the description. Let me uh, slip into something a little bit more comfortable so we can finish that frame. Ah, that is much better. Nice and dirty. Let's get to work. Unfortunately, I am out of the coarse and medium discs. I only have two fine discs left. So for this, it's not gonna be a mirror finish. We'll be aiming for a uh, satin finish. This is about as good as I can get this. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of getting in here and polishing the little ears that's gonna support the perspex. And I don't have any pickling gel, so yeah, I'm just gonna have to live with the discoloration from the welds. I am fully aware that this might start to rust at some point, but uh, if that happens, I can always pull the thing back out again and have it passivated. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Walking home last night, I realized that I've got a couple of metal cutting blades for my oscillating multi-tool, and I can kind of wrap my up in a blanket with the tool and cut the ends off of the arms on the solar arch without risking getting rust stains on anything. That is one end removed. Let's see if we can get the adapter on there. Like a glove. That is one solar panel adapter doohickey in place ready for the new solar panel. What I really like about this design, besides the satisfaction of having made them myself, is the fact that this is adjustable. It can slide back and forth a little bit. So if you need to replace those sun power solar panels, well, we've got some adjustability. The first adapter is in place and looking perfect. The second adapter, however, will not slide onto the arm. And I know why. That is because inside of square tubing, there is a little well that takes up some space. Now I knew that when I ordered the square tubing, so I ordered some square tubing that's 32 by 32 millimeters on the inside, and the arm is only 30 by 30, so I figured that might be okay. This is not the end of the world. All I have to do is, next time I go to the workshop, I'll bring this guy with me, and I can just file down that weld on the inside. A little bit annoying, but 
not the end of the world. I've got the frame that's covering the autopilot secured in place. The perspex that we're gonna use to actually fill in the holes in that frame are gonna show up early next week. I think this will work out really well. There should be just enough room for the dive compressor behind there. We'll have to pull it out when we use it, but that's okay. A couple of scuba tanks and some fenders. With the frame and the adapters done, I've gotten a good start on the stainless jobs this week. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I've ordered the solar panels that are gonna go on the arch. I ordered them so that they would show up Monday after Storm Eunice or whatever it's called that had a chance to blow away. Unfortunately, somebody misunderstood something and the solar panels got delivered Friday at noon during the height of the storm. Here where Athena's tied up, we're fairly well protected from the winds by the buildings behind us, but only a stone's throw away from here. Wind gusts up to 106 knots were reported. That's not really the best time to take delivery of something that's large and at the same time very light. Thankfully, the guys up at the office here are freaking rock stars. So the solar panels are now safe and secure inside of one of their offices. But uh, yeah, next week we're gonna have even more high winds blowing through. So I don't know if I'll be able to install them next week, but at least they're up there and nice and secure. For Ava and I, the storm was not that uncomfortable. It's the same wind direction as today. And as you can see, Athena's being pushed off of the finger we're tied onto here. And we've got mooring compensators on all of our lines. So yeah, it was very comfortable. Like I mentioned, there is a bunch more high wind days coming next week. So I don't know if I'll get around to the solar panels. They are a lot easier to install when it's not blowing a gale. In case the winds are too high, I've got a bunch of smaller jobs I'd like to take care of inside of the boat. So yeah, we'll see. But uh, let's end this week's video here before I blow away. So uh, yeah, we hope to see all you guys back aboard Athena next week. And uh, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.